Good morning, and thank you for tuning into our broadcast. I'm Pastor Augusta Booker. Life is filled with swift transitions. Things in this journey can change in an instant and cause us to lose our direction. Although you may have heard it before, God really does have a purpose and a plan for your life. So get ready for the Word of God and listen to what God has to say to us in His Word. Christian, you're going to see God in just about a few seconds. You know the rest of that sad story. And I dare not go farther with my sermon to send it until I ask every member here to remember the parents, remember the family of those who lost a loved one. You don't know them, but God know them. And I ask that you will still pray a prayer because pain is real. And pain hurts until you've had that pain. You really can't uh, understand. But we want them through the Spirit of God know that we lift them up in prayer. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Because we somehow cannot help ourselves. I'm having a little sinus, a little problem. I'm, I have a little 70 year old in me today. And if you give me a little more sound... Uh, I don't have too much 27 this morning, so I need help. Amen. Give me a little more sound. That's right. A wise man by the name of Solomon, and he wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, and that chapter talks about math and there's a time for everything. And in, in, in around about the seventh verse, Solomon said, there's a time to be silent. And there's a time to speak. This is where we center our message on. The time is now for every child of God to declare to others that Jesus is the Son of God. This gunman singled out Christians because they declared that they were Christians. But the time is now and when it comes to the church, because somehow we have gotten silent in declaring Jesus. We don't have a problem. We are very comfortable in talking about him during our 11 o'clock service or during our 930 service on Sunday. But Monday morning when we clock in, nobody knows where we've been. The time is now. Amen. Never before in the history of Christianity as an opportunity also to speak out has been made. There were times when I was younger, you didn't find many TV shows that talked about Jesus. You didn't find Sunday's best. Kirk Franklin and others declaring the love of Jesus. But we're in a time that we all need to open up our hearts and open up our mouths and let men and women know there is a joy and serving God. Amen? Amen? Somehow as a church, we need to break the silence and let people know that God is real because he's real in our heart. We need to cry out to the world who Jesus is. And not only that, even we need to let them know not only who he is, but we need to let them know what he will do. Am I making any sense? I want to ask you how good, how good are you at sharing your faith to one another. How good are you in telling your peers, your friends about Jesus? I don't mean you have to knock them across the head and, uh, you know, and, and make them. And I said, some of y'all don't know on Esther on Sanford and Son. You've probably seen Rewind, but uh, on Esther, will, she'll un Esther you to get to know Jesus. She'll call you a heathen in a minute. But I'm not asking you to get that, get that uh, aggressive. But you ought to show Jesus not only what you said, Brother Gray, but how we live. Am I making sense? How often do you discuss Jesus? Do you have a problem in telling your friends? Uh, some of us is real easy, but some is very difficult. We somehow get tongue-tied when we want to talk about Jesus and we worry that we might say the wrong thing. I don't know that much about the Bible, but I tell you what, just talk about what he's done for you. Am I right about it? 
Everybody can talk about the goodness of the Lord. Am I right about it? If you've been saved, if you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, if you've been redeemed, you ought to be able to tell men and women the love of God, how God can come into your heart. As I often say, take your lemon and put some sugar in it and make it lemonade. Let somebody know what he can do. Sometimes we think folks are just fed up with this Christian stuff, as they call it. And sinners sometimes call it Bible bashing, but my brother and sister just bash on. Am I right about it? We need to demonstrate how we live, that we have something that is far better than what they have. Satan knows. Satan can dress it up and he can shine it up. But Carol, none of his products as good as God's. Am I right about it? I know it's hard sometimes to tell your friend, your loved one, your co-worker about the love of God. But after you leave here this morning, I hope you have some holy boldness to not be ashamed. I know what they say. You can tell them, but you can't make them. Down in the country, we say you can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. But you can lead people to Christ, but you can't make them get right. That's, that's between them and God. Am I right about it? As we look into our text today in the book of Acts, I want you to walk with me in there. It's going to give us a good example of what happens when we speak of Jesus. Paul, Peter, and John broke their silence. They began to talk about Jesus. And as they spake, the Bible says in verse 1 and 2, the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple, the righteous folk, and the Sadducees came upon them, as you see in your Bible. And what happened? They were grieved. They were troubled, Brother Pierre, that they taught the people and how they taught the people. They began to talk about Jesus. But the Sadducees and, and the priests want them to talk about God. But I don't know how you can talk about God without talking about Jesus. I don't know how you can talk about Jesus without talking about God. I don't know how you can eat greens without cornbread. It was not until, it was not, it was not until after the resurrection of Jesus that the church broke their silence. And on the day of Pentecost, the book of Acts talk about it, when the Holy Ghost came, when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they could no longer be silent. And my brother and sister, when Jesus come into your heart, you just got to tell it, isn't that right? They could no longer be silent. And they developed what we call a holy boldness. And that's what we need today, have a holy boldness. We need to let the people know that you've been redeemed. You've been changed. You've been washed. And what God has done for you, the problem came. And this problem came as a result of Peter and John. And you know the story where they were going into the temple. And they met a man who was lame. And he was asking for money. He was asking for alms. And and Peter and John made great uh, statements. They say, look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, uh-oh, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Peter and John, after saying that, uh, Carol found themselves in a whole lot of trouble. They said, Jesus. They began to teach, and, and, and uh, sometime uh, uh, they began to teach, and the religious leaders came upon them. And you know, sometimes I found sometimes your, 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 your strongest enemies are your peers. Are your peers. Uh, it could be happening on your job, but it happened uh, in the re religious sect. Sometimes uh, our strongest enemy, uh, our preacher friend, or your Christian friends. And, and, and sometimes I don't know why it is, but that's the way it is. But that's all right. God knows what can happen, and he knows that he's in charge of everything, and whatever God has for you, 
nobody can take it away. Am I right about it? They got in trouble because they mentioned Jesus. The Sadducees came up while Peter and John were speaking, and, and they said, now look now, we, we hear you teaching and all of that, but I want you, number one, to Peter, kind of calm it down. Don't say Jesus. If you want your song to get on playing time, don't say Jesus. You better write a song with not too much Jesus in it if you want it to get played. You know what I'm talking about. And what they're saying, you don't say Jesus, you say God. And Peter and John looked at them, and, and they looked at Peter and John, and I guess they looked at each other, Melton, and they began to judge Peter and John. And down in verse 13, they made their uh, 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 um, assumption of who they were. They said, now, they look like they are dummies because the Bible said that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They said that they... They didn't learn this in no college, because I can tell the way they talk. So they had been with somebody. Am I right about it? And my brothers and sisters, I'm an advocate of education. And it just don't make sense, especially young people, not to get themselves in some type of learning situation so you can better your life. It's easy to just walk around doing nothing. I'm an advocate that you need to get an education. You don't go to a college, get you a trade or something so you can make your own money. You can buy your own papa dough. Am I right about it? And if you're just hanging there a while, you, you don't have to steal nothing now. You just get, get a job and save some money. You can pay for what you want. I'm an advocate of education, but yet and still, it takes more than what's on your wall to know Jesus. You don't have to have it to know Jesus. You don't have to go into a seminary. You don't have to go to these things to know Jesus. You can be just an ordinary person and know Jesus. Am I right about it? So they say, now they must have been with somebody. I tell you what, folks will know when you've been with Jesus. They'll know. They'll know. And Peter looked at them, and, and they said, now, I don't want you to speak about Jesus. Just talk about God. Now, this locks us in, Jimmy, and what our theme is. Our theme is from uh, religion to relationship. And this is what, this is a good lesson about that because the priests and the Sadducees, they had good religion. Good religion, but religion is different than relationship. Am I right about it? When you're dealing with religion, that's halfway to where God wants you to be. When you're dealing with religion, you're dealing with rules and regulation. Ain't nothing wrong with rules and regulation. You need to have some order. Even the church has an order. You don't come in there and do what you want to do. They have to be directed, but that's, that's half of the work. Am I making sense? Religion is man's opinion, what man thinks, not what God thinks. That's what religion is. Religion is a big old checklist of what you do and what you don't. But when you're dealing with relationship, you're dealing with Jesus. You're dealing with somebody that loves you, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, and no matter where you've been. He just wants you to change where you're going. That's relationship. Am I right about it? Religion and relationship is just like your first date. Your first date with somebody, you don't know them, you just didn't even know how to spell their name, you don't know nothing, and you ain't going to tell them nothing. I hope not. <laughs> Slow down. Am I right about it? But until you build that relationship, until you know them better, until you've been with them longer, then you begin to open up and get comfortable in talking about some things. And then you, you enjoy a relationship. And this is about Jesus. If you're just going through strict rules and all of that and without the love of God, you really haven't realized the joy and life that God can give you. Have your life and have it more abundantly. I was told by a friend of mine in Columbus, say, now, Reverend, uh, I got friends who want to come to church, but they say it's too many rules and regulations. But I say, you should have told them the good side of it. I know that rules and regulations. When I go to Papa Doe, that's some rules and regulations. You sit down. Am I right about it? 
and you keep the plate in front of you. Am I right about it? And you don't be knocking with folks that come on, come on. You just be nice till they bring it and just hope they don't forget about you. There's the, you have to have order in everything. Am I right? You don't be a loose cannon on board a ship in a church. You got to have regulations, but yet and still God sent his love to let you know that it's bigger than all of that. That's all Peter and John did. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. In the name of Jesus. Peter wanted to know you can't legislate salvation. Salvation come by loving God. Am I right about it? By faith you're saved. It's about the Holy God that who came down and, and hung on a, on a cross and gave his life in the form of his son Jesus. God incarnate came down and, and rose one Sunday morning and gave us life where we have life and true life. There would not be a Reverend Booker if he hadn't done that. It wouldn't have been a sister and brother y'all if he hadn't have done that. But thank God for Jesus. That's relationship. Because if you want to be honest with yourself, we all that. Am I right about it? If you want a relationship, you be, if you want to tell the truth, you better get another blank sheet and fill out what they ain't got on the sheet. But God, through his love, wipes away our sin and forget all about our past. It ain't where you've been, it's where you're going. Am I making sense? Here, Peter, here, Peter, uh, uh, they, they, they say, now, whether uh, we want you to just be quiet. We just don't want you to talk about nothing else about God. Just shut up. And Peter and John stood there in verse 19 and 20 and said, now, uh, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken to you, verse 19, more than unto God, you be the judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. You going to judge me, but I saw it. I heard it. And I can't help but speak what I seen and heard. Pratt, back in the day, I, I paid for the first car I ever paid for. I thought I wasn't going to never pay for it. But I paid for it. And they sent me a, a seat. That was before the modern computers and everything. They sent me a farm. And I got it, and I just, old school, you keep all your papers. And uh, I got it, and it was stamped paid in full. Larry Richard had seen me shouting. I got that thing and put it in my personal papers and everything, and I got a call from that company saying that they hadn't received the payment. And I said, no, because I've seen and heard. You're wrong, brother, you're wrong. No, we, we have your record, and we just want you to talk to us. I said, no, we, we're not going to do that. You just call me later. And soon I hung up. I went to the place and pulled out my paper and said, paid in full. And I held that paper like it was going to catch on fire. And I couldn't wait until they called me. And Linda, they still didn't call me. I had wished they would call me so I could just lay my legend down. Am I right about it? They wouldn't call me. I can say, look here, I got it. You can't make me say what you want to say. I got it. I saw, not on I heard, because when you see something paid for, you hear it too, don't you? <laughs> don't tell me, don't tell me to stop talking about Jesus. Because I know too much about him. And I heard and I saw. And if you want me to shut up, I cannot but speak. I cannot but speak. I can't help myself. Hello? No way they were going to keep Peter and John quiet. They had passion. They had passion. They had passion for the proper and to proclaim that God means to Jesus good news. And we ought to be like Peter and John. We ought to have a passion to speak out for the Lord. Passion where we can't help ourselves. Talk about the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has been so good. And, and, and if you really have God in you, 
and life, you'll be like Jeremiah. Jeremiah said in, in the 20th chapter of Jeremiah, he said, then I said, I will not make mention of him. Folks been laughing at Jeremiah, Brother Pierre, and talking about him and, 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 and just mocking him. And, and he just gave up. And I made him want to just burn up everything he had something to do about God. He is a preacher, wanted to give up. And now he said, I'm not going to speak anymore in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. There was a man told his wife one day, uh, uh, sister, uh, sister Hall, I, honey, I ain't going to church. She came and said, baby, aren't you going to church? I'm just sick and tired of them people. I'm not going to church no more. She said, honey, you need to get up and go. I ain't going. She went back and came back. She said, baby, I just believe you need to get your clothes on and go to church. Are you going to do it? He looked at her and said, why should I go to church? His wife said, you ought to go to church because you're the pastor. <laughs> Give me a hand for that. <laughs> and I've had moments, be honest with you, in my younger days, I'm all right now. It take a little, it take too much. To, 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 I got thick skin now, but as a young man, I wanted to get up. And God said, you crazy, go back. And I know what Jeremiah felt, but he says, like fire, I can't help myself. You ought to get the can't help us in your life. If God's been good to you. There ought to be some, excuse my country language, there ought to be some help, some help it. Hello? Don't get too modern that you can't talk about Jesus. Am I right about it? When I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me, Gwen, I can't help but cry out and say, you ought to have some. I hate to talk about food, but I tasted bluebell. And it's so good, I want everybody to have it. And don't come tell me what you saw on TV about something they found in that thing. I'm telling you, it's still good. You may say or think you don't know if you want to talk, but if God's been good to you, you want to talk about him. Am I right about it? If he blessed your soul and made you whole, you ought to want to talk about it. If you've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, that means you've been recovered by God from your sin. You ought to be able to tell somebody. Hello? Let the redeemed of the Lord what? As I face tomorrow, as I take my seat and go on to Jordan, as I face tomorrow, Doretha, I want you and everyone to know I can't help but praise the Lord. I got to can't help it, Melton, because God's been so good to me. And I, this song rang in my heart, and don't, don't get scared. I ain't going to try to sing it. But I just want to tell you somewhere, Kathy Taylor, He's Worthy is a song that blends with what I'm saying. You got something to tell. You got something because God is worthy in your life. Am I right about it? I must tell the goodness of the Lord. Am I making sense? She said, he stepped into my life and removed all misery and strife. Has he done that for you? You ought to have the can't help it. He gave me a new determination. He's the joy of my salvation. You need to tell that. I've got to tell of his goodness. I've got to sing of his mercy. Tell it. I've got to give him the glory, for he alone is worthy. Tell it, tell it, tell it. He gave me strength when I was weak. He told me to be humble and meek. Christ was humble all the way to the cross. So my soul wouldn't be lost. Tell somebody. I've got a story to tell. Just like she said, I was a soul destined to hell, and you all were too. But he saved, just in the nick of time, he saved the soul of mine. So long as some, I was some lost sheep, he's trying to find. But even in the midst of my storms, and though we all have storms, 
Storms come to all of us in the middle of it. God comes in the midst of it. He doesn't run around, uh, go around uh, the storm like an airplane and wait for you on the other end. God drops right in where you are and helps you through your storms. Has he done it for anybody at 930? I don't hear you. Has he done it? I still don't hear you. Has he done it? For somebody haven't had a storm, won't he do it? I don't hear you. Won't he do it? You ought to tell it. Somebody needs to hear it. Some lost soul needs to hear it. Somebody trying to find an answer in the bottom of a ball or at the end of a needle. But the problem, correction is in Jesus Christ. You don't have to be alone. Just give him the glory. He alone is worthy. I can't help but speak of what I have heard and seen. The redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. You know, strongholds can fall off your life and you can move from religion to relationship. And I'm just inviting you to, to join us next week as you continue to discover God's plan for your life. God has a plan for your life and he wants to do things in your life. And so allow him to do that. If you're ever in Houston, we'd we'll love to see you. We are one church in two locations with three great services. And if you come, you will say like we say, it's worth the trip to the same. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast with Dr. Guster Booker. We hope you were blessed and inspired by today's message. If you would like a copy of today's message, please feel free to call us at 713-734-5670 or visit us online at www.greaterstmatthewschurch.com. For more information, please join us for one of our powerful services. We are one church in two locations. You can join us at our southeast location at 7701 Jutland at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. and at our southwest location, 14919 South Main at 9.30 a.m. If you attend any of our services, you will say like we say, it was worth the trip to the saint. And always remember, we have room for you at the saint.